We are back with a updated hair care routine. I feel like I am really and truly in my hair care era and I'm here to share the secrets. She says, well, she looks like literally like a bald cat with her hair scraped back, but you know what? We're close to hair wash day and I wasn't curling my hair for nobody. So the sleek pony, it is. Also, please excuse this chair. It is literally squeaking with every single move that I make. Let's get into it. I have done a hair care video before on my channel and a lot of the things I'm gonna share are similar. There are things that I tried and tested and things that I still do today with a few new things sprinkled on in there. I really can't believe I came on here to do a hair care video with this bald cat ponytail. I'm just gonna dive straight in. I've got a basket of goodies down by my side to show you some of the products specifically that I use, but some things are gonna be techniques as well and just little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that help me keep my hair in the best condition possible and give it the best chance at growing gorgeous and long and glossy and just chef's kiss. I'm gonna pull things out in order of my hair care routine. So I'm gonna try and do it in the steps that I would actually take if I was gonna do all these things right now. So I personally only wash my hair once a week Lots of people could be like, that's disgusting. But I mean, really, is it? I'm not saying I don't get in the shower, but I do only wash my hair once a week. The less frequently you wash your hair, the better it is for your hair. And yes, it did take me some training to get my hair to that point. If you are used to washing your hair every two, three days, your hair will get greasy every two, three days. If you can train your hair and not wash your hair for a really long period of time, it will kind of cleanse itself and it will stop getting so greasy so quickly. So my head doesn't get greasy every day anymore. I can wait a full week. So usually it's a Sunday, wash it ready for the week. But obviously if there's different things going on during the week and I need fresh hair, I can stagger it. But general rule of thumb, I do only wash my hair once a week, which means I only have to do this entire routine once a week, which does keep it quite low maintenance and doesn't mean that it's like a huge task. So hair wash day rolls around. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna oil my hair. I have been using castor oil for a really, really, really long time. And the one that I specifically use is from Amazon. It's this brand, Nascence, I'm not sure. Nascence Castor Oil 217. I'm not really sure what any of that means to be honest, but it's basically just this bottle of castor oil. I've been using this for years and years and years and I absolutely love it for my hair. Castor oil, you can do the research, is really really good for hair growth, hair thickness and getting you all these nice little baby hairs where you may have gaps when you kind of scrape your hair back like this. This works an absolute charm. I've worked my way through honestly a lot of bottles of this and I do absolutely love it. Another hair oil that I have been trying out is rosemary oil. I've seen a lot of things about it on TikTok and I decided that I wanted to try it out for myself. So the one that I got is the one that everyone talks about, the Nature Spells Rosemary Oil. And I've seen a lot of people saying like, that's gonna make your hair fall out. You shouldn't be using rosemary oil on your hair. This one is specifically diluted already for use on your hair. So if you use it, it's not gonna make your hair fall out. Obviously don't use the whole bottle, but make sure if you are buying rosemary oil, you do buy it in its diluted form because yes, in its pure form, it is really bad for your hair. I don't have the actual bottle here because I actually have dispensed it into one of these, which is the next thing that I wanted to talk about. So this is the rosemary oil that I've got left. I've obviously used all of this, but I got this just from Amazon. I think it was seven pound for a pack of two. You get a pink one and you get a white one. And it's basically just a little plastic bottle with a comb on the end. You pour the oil in and then the comb has little holes on the end. So when you put it in your hair, you literally tip it upside down and comb it and squeeze and all the oil will kind of come out of here, come through the comb and into your hair. It's just a little bit of a nicer way of applying it rather than pouring oil into your hands, rubbing it together, everything feeling oily and like slacking it through. You can kind of keep your hands a little bit clean. You can just tip this up and you can just... I am still trying out the rosemary oil. I've went through almost one bottle once I've finished this. I'll have used one bottle of it. And I do have to say, I do think it works. I just have, I have two problems with the rosemary oil in comparison to the castor oil. The first one is that rosemary oil is a lot thinner. Rosemary oil is a bit of a tongue twister. Rosemary oil is a lot thinner than castor oil. So when you put it through your hair and then scrape your hair back into a bun, put it in a clip, whatever you're gonna do, it's gonna run. So it runs down my face, it runs down the back of my neck, it kind of trickles down my forehead, it does run onto my face. So I do find myself every kind of half an hour or so going into the bathroom and wiping the oil from around my face, which is a little bit annoying because I like to leave the oil on for as long as possible. So usually I would do it in the morning, leave it on all day and then wash my hair late in the afternoon or in the evening. But with that one, I do tend to leave it on for a little bit less time because if you are moving around, walking, bending up, bending down, it's just gonna run and it just, it gets annoying to be honest. 
And the only other problem I've had with rosemary oil, I don't know if anybody else has had this, but I did Google it and it is a thing. It gives me a headache if I leave it on for too long. I don't know if it's the scent. I'm assuming it is. The scent is very, very, very strong. It literally smells like roast potatoes. I know you don't really want your hair to be smelling like roast potatoes, but if you're just gonna do it, like be in the house, it's fine. But it does give me a little bit of a headache. The castor oil, I can literally put on first thing in the morning, leave it on all day. It doesn't drip, doesn't give me a headache. Rosemary oil, I would say after like three hours, I'm like, right, I need to wash this off. Like I'm getting a headache and it's just like in my eyes. It's just, it's not as convenient. And I would absolutely definitely recommend one of these from Amazon just to put it in. It just feels like that extra little step, you know, when you're doing your self care routine to just like get your little comb out and just do that extra little step. And it just prevents mess. To be honest, it does prevent a lot of mess. It prevents it getting all over your hands. And it's just a cute little addition into my hair care routine. And I only oil all the top, basically the bit that's attached to my head. That's the bit that I oil. So all of the scalp, all of the underneath, and all of the back here that is attached to the head, all of this bit that kind of hangs free at the back, I don't oil that, I just oil the bit that's attached to my head. I've already said that. So once I've gone through all of that and I've put all the oil in, I then put a hair mask through the ends. I'm not really too fussy on hair masks. I see a lot of people recommending different hair masks. Honestly, as long as it's just a leave-in conditioner, I find that it kind of all does the same thing. I've tried L'Oreal ones, I've tried Garnier, I've tried Pantene, I've tried Grow Gorgeous. It's just whichever one I kind of have to hand at that time. This is honestly from so long ago, I don't even know if they sell this anymore, but I found it in my cupboard and it was sealed, so it hadn't been opened, so it is still good to use. So this mask does say that it's best to use on damp hair. Yeah, saturate damp hair from mid lengths to ends. So it's best to use on damp hair. I am not, best believe, getting in the shower to wet my hair to then get out to put this mask on. It's not gonna happen, it's just a whole thing. So what I've actually done is I just bought an empty spray bottle. I'm sure I got this from like Venom or something in one of those like travel kits. So it's literally just a spray bottle that you would like fill with hairspray or whatever you wanted to take on holiday. And I just filled it with water from the tap. So when I wanna put this hair mask in, so I will just take the ends, spray this all in, just to spray some water on it to make sure that it's damp. And then I can go straight in with the hair mask without having to have the hassle of getting in and out of the shower to wet my hair. That is such a hack that seems so simple and so straightforward and I don't know if I was just being thick for so long, but I would never use hair masks on damp hair because I'd be like, oh, I can't bother getting in the shower. Why did I not think of this? And why did nobody put me on this? So hopefully I've just solved a problem for a lot of you girlies out there. Or maybe I'm just slow, but works a charm. So this is the Beauty Works Times Molly Mae Vanilla Glossy Locks, Glossy Locks Mask. And it's with argan oil, macadamia oil, and jasmine extract. And it's basically just a conditioner. So I just open it, squeeze it into my hand. You don't get a lot with this one. So this one probably isn't gonna last you very long. But the ones that come in a tub, they do tend to last a lot longer because you can just kind of scoop a little bit out and you get like a big pot. So this one probably isn't gonna last you that long, but to be honest, I do really like it. Don't know if it really smells like vanilla. Wouldn't really say it smells like vanilla, but it's nice. It feels conditioning. It's not too heavy. It's not sticky. So I literally just squeeze that into the palm of my hand rub it all through the ends and then there we go i have the whole top of my head oiled i have the whole bottom of my head conditioned and i look like a greasy mess then i will just put that back out of my face and get on with my day the way that i like to do that is literally just scrape it back with my hands i'll swirl it around and i'll put it into a bun and i will always 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 put it in a bun with a silk scrunchie when your hair is wet whether that be with water conditioner whatever it is it is more susceptible to breakage so you don't want to use like a really elasticated strong hair tie in your hair you want to use something really soft that's just going to hold it in place and not put any pressure on your hair so i have a whole basket of silk scrunchies but i have one that's specifically dedicated to hair wash day that i use when i've got oil and masks in my hair because obviously it's going to get oily and it never really comes clean so just pick your least favorite scrunchie that you don't want to wear out and just use that as your hair wash scrunchie this is mine this is my pink camo scrunchie i am never ever 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 going to wear this pink camo scrunchie out so this is my hair wash scrunchie so i just keep this one in my basket and every time i've got my oil and my hair mask in i just take this swirl my hair up in a bun, put my pink camel scrunchie on and just go about my life. So I've oiled my hair, I've hair masked my hair, it's up in my silk scrunchie and I'm living my best life. Fast forward, eight to 10 hours, whatever it is. Some hair masks say leave them on for five to 10 minutes. 
it doesn't really matter. The longer you leave them on, the better. So just leave it on all day. Wait until it gets to the evening. It's time to go in the shower. So when I get in the shower, first things first, lukewarm water. Do not use scalding hot water on your hair. It's actually best to wash your hair. The colder the water, the better. But best believe I'm not washing my hair in cold water. So just lukewarm water, just as much as you can tolerate and rinse out the hair mask, rinse out the oil. And then it's time to double cleanse. Just like skincare, we want to double cleanse our hair. We want to get rid of all the dead skin, all the dead gunk, rubbish, whatever. You want to get rid of it all from your scalp. I always go in with some kind of scalp scrub. This is the one that I've been using at the minute and I've absolutely been loving it. This is the Christoph Robin Cleansing Purifying Scrub with sea salt um, for a sensitive and oily scalp, a soothing detox treatment shampoo. So it comes in a big tub like this. You open it up and it looks like a body scrub, like an exfoliating body scrub. It's kind of got all those salt crystals in there and it's really rough, like the texture of it is like very gritty. So I just take a scoop of this out, wet my hands, rub it in between my hands, really get a good lather on it. And then I go to town on my scalp, like really, really massaging this in, getting out all of the dead skin cells and getting out all of the oil that's been in my hair all day. Just really, really like, go for it with this this one is a little bit pricey but i really do think this is worth it like i say i've tried a lot of different scalp scrubs and i really 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 do enjoy this one and it really does last a long time because it is a big tub but if you're not in the market for something this pricey just find a cheaper one just find something that's got a lot of grit to it so it really exfoliates and gets rid of all that dead skin once that's all all up in there i then go in with my scalp massager this one is from grow gorgeous i think i got it with one of their hair masks but i'm sure you can just get one of these on amazon it's basically just you just grip it and it's got like silicone things and you just want to really 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 massage your scalp for five to ten minutes but i'm going to be honest i don't do that i probably do it for like two minutes and then like my arm is aching i just i'm done but just really, really massage that scalp scrub, scrub it in as much as you possibly can all around the top and also make sure to take it underneath basically any hair that is attached to your head. That's where we want to massage and that's where we want to really get that scrub all up in there. Rinse it out, cleanse it, time for the second lot of shampoo. So that was your scalp scrub and then you've got a shampoo and condition as usual. I have said it before and I will say it again, this is the best shampoo and conditioner that I've ever used. It's super affordable, I get mine from Boots. It's just unreal, like this brand, they have a whole range of different colours and each different colour like relates to a different thing that it should do for your hair. But this is the Thick and Full Biotin and Collagen Shampoo and Conditioner by the brand OG... X? I don't even know what this brand is, I just know what it looks like and I buy it. What is the brand? OGX? OGI? I don't know, but this is the best shampoo and conditioner I've ever used. Like I say, I just get mine from Boots, I stock up on it whenever it's on offer, or whenever I've got extra beauty advantage cards from Boots, I'm stocking up on this because I just absolutely love it. It is so good for just making your hair feel so thick, so full, so soft. Whenever I try out a new shampoo and conditioner, I'm always like, it's not really doing it. I kind of forget about how good this is. I come back to it and I'm like, why did I ever stop using this? Like. This combo with the scalp scrub while you're in the shower, like it really do be, do be doing the most. Like this is just all those expensive shampoos and conditioners you can buy, treatments, whatever. These just, these do it, okay? Another tip, when you're in the shower, you only want to shampoo the bits of hair that are touching your head. Similar to the scalp scrub, just all of this bit, all of this bit underneath, you only want to shampoo your scalp. Don't shampoo all of this bit, just wash the top and then everyone's like how does the bottom get wet get cleaned when you rinse your hair all the shampoo is going to run down and it's going to clean all this hair anyways so you're going to be cleaning it without drying it out by overusing shampoo on it so you just want to shampoo the top half of your head rinse it out let the bottom half get clean and then go in with your conditioner and then you want to do it the other way around for your conditioner you just want to condition the ends so just condition everything that's not touching your head Otherwise, you're going to let your scalp get greasy again after you've just done all that work to cleanse it and get rid of all the skin. You're going to undo all your hard work. So you just want to go shampoo on the top, conditioner on the bottom. And the longer that you can leave your conditioner on for, the better. So if you want to condition, put it on and then like shave your legs or do whatever you want to do, the longer you can leave this on, the better. So we're scalp scrubbed, we've massaged, we've shampooed, we've conditioned. Now we're ready to get out. 
Do not get out the shower and start drying your hair with a towel because you're just gonna break all of your hair. It's already wet, it's already susceptible to damage. If you start rubbing it around with a hard cotton towel, you're just gonna break all of your hair. Just get out and leave it. Either put it up in like one of those hair towels and just let it be, just leave it to air dry for five, 10 minutes, whatever it is, just don't start scrubbing it and drying it with a towel, okay? One more thing that I really love to use when I get out of the shower is by L'Oreal and it's this no hair cut cream. It's basically just a leave-in conditioner. I've gone through about a million bottles of this and when your hair is damp, so after it's air dried for a little while, just take a squeeze of this and just take it through the ends and it's really gonna try and help fix any split ends that you've got, prevent any further breakage, prevent any further damage. It's called no haircut cream. It's basically to reduce breakage that you don't need to get a haircut as often. And I do really like it. I do really think that this works. I do go in with a couple of other products while my hair is still wet. So I will use a couple of other leave-in products, including a hair oil and a few other things, but really to kind of grow your hair and look after your hair. You don't really need every single one of these products. The main thing is the masking, the washing, and then just a couple of other tips and tricks as you go along. So I just have two more things to talk about, and these are things that I do daily. So this isn't in the run-up to hair wash day. This isn't on hair wash day. This is just in general, two things that I do for my hair that I found have really helped the health of it, the growth of it, and just in general, the quality of my hair. Anytime I brush my hair, I always, 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 always use one of these. Oh, mine's a bit... I'm a little bit dirty. Let me just, uh, I'll be right back. It's a little bit better. Anytime I brush my hair, I always, always, always use one of these silicone brushes. So this is a Tangle Teaser and it just has soft bristles. So it's not really gonna pull through your hair and it's not gonna break your hair because the bristles aren't too hard. So this brand is the best to be honest. This is the one that I use, Tangle Teaser and it just has really, really, really soft bristles. So I try not to brush my hair too, too often because anything tugging through your hair could still cause breakage. But as and when you do brush it, just use a soft brush. Don't use like a one pound really hard plastic paddle brush because you're just gonna break your hair. And the next thing I was gonna say, which I don't know if I can say it now because it's a little bit hypocritical, but wash your hairbrush. If you think about it, if you've got like hairspray in your hair, product in your hair, and then you run your hairbrush through it, and then you wash your hair and you run the same hairbrush through it, you're just dragging all that dirt back through. So you can have two separate hairbrushes if you like, one for when you've got like product and oil and things, and then one for when your hair's clean. That would be the best thing to do. But if not, just frequently wash your hairbrush. It's so easy to do. I should probably give mine a wash, but the way that I do it is I literally just fill the sink with hot water, put in some soap. So even just like berry liquid or anything, just any kind of soap, hand soap, and then put the brush in upside down and just let it soak for a couple of hours. And then when you come back, everything should be soft and it should just pull out. You can get one of those, um, hair scrapers as well. It's a bit like a tweezer and you just put it in and pull all of the rubbish out because you don't want to be dragging all that dirt through your lovely clean hair. So do wash your hairbrushes as well. I will take my own advice. Last but not least, this is a recent discovery for me and I absolutely love it. This is the L'Oreal Elvive Hydra Hyaluronic Moisture Plump Serum. Leave in, replumps and reshapes hair, daily hydration booster for deep dehydrated hair. Let me start again, I don't know what I've just said. This is the L'Oreal Elvive Hydra Hyaluronic Moisture Plump Serum. It says that it replumps and reshapes hair, leave in dehydrated hair and it's a daily hydration booster with no buildup. It does everything it says on the tin. So I use this every single day, sometimes twice a day. I've kind of incorporated this as part of my skincare routine. So I just keep it in the same place. And when I do my skincare, I just use this as well. So I use it definitely every single night and sometimes on a morning as well. But I literally just open it up and do, I usually do about six pumps just in the ends of my hair and then just kind of run it through with my hands. And it says, what I really love about it is it says it's a daily moisturiser for your hair, which I just think it's just unreal. Like why have we never thought of that before? It says this serum helps boost and reshape your lens inspired by skincare used like a daily moisturiser. It, it does what it says on the tin, it moisturises your hair, your hair looks hydrated. So I can't recommend this enough. It's super affordable. I think I got mine from Boots and yeah, I'm gonna repurchase this as soon as this runs out because it's just that extra little step that you can take every single day in the run up to hair wash day to just really rejuvenate your hair, look after it and keep it looking healthy and fresh. So that is it. That is all of my tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to keep my hair looking healthy. I hope it helped you somewhat if you are on a hair journey and you're trying to grow your hair or just improve the condition of your hair in general. Let me know if you do try anything or if you love any of these products and also let me know if you have any recommendations. I'm always in the market to try new hair care goodies. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!